three and welcome back to story time so you requested the truth pixie by matt haig and i'm so pleased that you wanted to reread this book because it is absolutely brilliant and i hope you love it as much the second time around the truth pixie by matt haig in a land 2000 miles from here is a place where snow falls all the year there you find trolls and goblins and elves and talking rabbits rather pleased with themselves good day to you other odd creatures live there as well like this truth pixie whose tale i shall tell truth pixie sad as she's not like the others she's not like her 19 sisters or brothers she's not like her brother brian who dances and sings she's not like her sister sylvia with bright shiny wings she can't tell tories stories she can't sing songs she can't do magic she can't write wrongs in fact for a pixie she's quite peculiar and the reason for that is her great aunt julia when she was young aunt jay cast a spell she said from this day on the truth you shall tell to be the truth pixie that is her curse she must tell the truth for better or worse imagine Wherever she is, whatever the day, she only has one kind of thing to say. Just as cats go meow and dogs go moo, the truth pixie can only say things that are true. It's good to never tell a lie, that's what people always say, but they've probably never met the truth pixie on a cold winter's day. If she'd done something wrong, she'd have to confess. And if you'd look scruffy, she'd say, what a mess. So the pixie stays alone in her little yellow house with no friends except for a strange brown mouse. The mouse is called Marta and lives in her hair. Yes, that's right, her hair. Look, the mouse is there. Hello, I'm Marta. The pixie looks at her empty shelves we must go to town to feed ourselves. The truth pixie sighs as she puts on a shoe. She's ever so lonely, but what can she do? Aww, truth pixie. To make good friends, it shouldn't be hard. Invite them to dinner, send them a card, sing them a song or have a party. Be super kind and dress really smartly. Well, poor TP, she's tried this and more, but now look, she's scared to leave her own door. No matter the card, no matter the song, something always, always goes wrong. Like the time she made dinner for an elf named Tinky and said that her breath was far too stinky. Or when she had a party for her sister, Emily and sang happy birthday in front of her family. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you. All my family are creepy, but not as much as you. <gasps> Rude. So her family got cross and never came back. And where there were friends, there was now a big lack. So the truth pixie decided, along with her mouse, to give up on friends and stay sad in her house. Truth shouldn't hurt people, truth shouldn't surprise. But oh, Marta, it does. I so wish I'd tell lies. When I go out, I hope to see absolutely no one except you and me. The truth pixie looks in the mirror and tells herself, don't cry, even as she wipes a lonely tear from her eye. And so she is off walking fast into town, trying to look unfriendly and keep her head down. But oh no, what's this over here? An elf waving and grinning ear to ear. The truth pixie tries to hide inside a big bush and says to her mouse, please Marta, shush. But it's too late, she knows it's true because the elf is saying, how do you do? Of course, most people would say, I'm fine, have a nice day. And then they'd happily be on their way. But the truth pixie can't just be polite. The pixie tells the truth if it takes all night. 
so she breathes deep and closes her eyes. Well, I'm feeling dreadful and that's no lie. And now that you ask, if you really must know, when I left the house, I stubbed my big toe. But that's not the trouble. No, really, no. The trouble is the truths just won't let go. Every elf or pixie who asks me a question gets a horrible truth I can't help but mention. So I'm stressed in bed and stressed on the loo and the mouse in my hair has just done a poo. Okay, right, says the elf backing away. Is that the time? Maybe another day. Our pixie, poor pixie, waves by and feels sad. I reply to their questions, but they just think I'm mad. I don't know how to stop doing what I do without answering questions with things that are true. The truth pixie carries on with her walking and hopes she won't have to do any more talking. I wish there was someone who could handle the truth, but there isn't and my lonely heart is the proof. As she reaches town, the road becomes busy. The truth pixie's fear of questions is making her dizzy. Do you like my hair? Another elf inquires. Hmm, it looks like a thousand ugly wires. What about my clothes? I got them from this great place. Well, to be fair, they're better than your face. The elf is angry and goes bright red. I hate you, Pixie. I wish you were dead. Oh dear. Along comes a rabbit, fluffy and brown, wondering about the truth Pixie's frown. Good day, Pixie. What are you thinking? The truth Pixie groans and speaks without blinking. I'm thinking that rabbits are the oddest things ever. Floppy-eared weirdos who aren't very clever. I'm thinking I wish they didn't go shopping when they can't even walk and insist upon hopping and I keep stepping in their gross round droppings. I'm sorry for the truth, but it's just not stopping. The truth Bixie bites her own hand and runs down the street until she looks up and sees two massive feet. Too late! Crash and bump! She bangs into a foot and a big warty lump. The foot is so huge and knobbly and wide, the pixie feels fear all through her insides. I'm so sorry, I didn't see where I was going. But hey, look at that, I think it stopped snowing. Uh-oh. The truth pixie stares up and up to the sky. His heart, Her heart beats fast and there's no wondering why. The person she's met is no person at all, but a troll who's way over 30 foot tall. Taller than a tree and a house. <gasps> she knows of the troll. She's seen him before. He likes to start fights and is best to ignore. He picks up the pixie to get a close look. The truth pixie read about this in a book. She pulled high in the sky, trapped in his fist. Let me go to my house, there, through the mist. The troll laughs. Oh, I bet you taste yum. Your new house be soon in my grig, big greedy tum. Wait, wait. TP squeaks. Don't be so hasty. I may look sweet, but I'm bony, not tasty. Mmm, grumbles the troll. Then please tell me, what can you do to stay out of my belly? The truth pixie gulps. The truth pixie is scared. The truth pixie knows the truth can't be shared. She tries to think as the troll face comes near, but it's hard to think with a brain full of fear. Maybe, the troll says, you is not my food. Tell me a story, but make it good. Come on, speak up. What's the matter with you? The truth pixie sighs. Oh, it has to be true. He holds the poor creature and squeezes her tight. Oh, this be perfect. This be so right. You see, I scare every creature. And every bird, so the truth be something I never have heard. But, says the pixie, 
in a rather quiet, quick blurt, you should know that the truth can sometimes hurt. Well, listen now, Pixie, and listen hard. Look at my arms. Look how I be scarred. I be tough as rock and strong as stone. I have no fear in my blood and none in my bones. I eat monsters for breakfast and beasts for my tea. There's nothing that scares me. Don't you see? The truth won't hurt. I'm too tough for that. I'm no big, soft, fluffy, scaredy cat. Cat? says the mouse in Truth Pixie's hair and she looks for a cat but no cat is there. The troll keeps talking with breath that does stink. Tell me, Truth Pixie, what do you think? I don't think he's going to be happy with the truth. The Truth Pixie tries to hold her mouth closed. She covers her lips and breathes out of her nose but the truth is strong. The truth can't be planned and so the truth comes fast and down goes her hand. What do I think? I have nothing to say. Ah, oh no, the words are on their way. I think you are lumpy and warty and stupid. I think you are smelly and ugly and putrid. I think you are dumb and not in a fun way. If you were a plane, you'd get stuck on the runway. I think your teeth are yellow and brown. I think you should be careful when you come to town. Your feet are too stompy and you make people shake. You are a giant, horrendous, walking earth quake. You eat people who really shouldn't be eaten, and once crushed a whole town in a land called Sweden. You're a nasty troll who smells like we, and now I suppose you're going to eat me. And we'll stop there. We'll read the rest next time.